All right, I'm going to give my bit on WWDC 2011. I'm going to break this up into several videos because in true Mr. Bit fashion, I make incredibly long videos and I want to keep your attention span because some things are just really important like AirPlay not being a Dropbox alternative and security as in the file vault 2 and getting total hard drive encryption. We have address randomization now in 32 and 64 bit apps. Some things in syncing, like an iOS 5, if an app, specifically an iPad app, is there enough intelligence to say it doesn't go to the iPhone in true application syncing? Obviously, some of the things were demonstrated in saying, well, if Pages was available in the iPhone and the iPad, then the document itself would be synced. So let me give you a little bit of my opinion of what I've seen. I'll start off with OS X Line. The biggest thing that turned me really off, which I know people are maybe for or were against and now for, or perhaps they were for now against, is something that I've posted on Twitter many times. And as a, si as a side note segue, if you really want to see an emotional side of me for right then and there, I'd suggest following me on Twitter, which is MrBit10, and you can capture a, a lot of entertaining posts and articles that I see fit. Getting back, making OS X Line only available through the App Store to me is just pff, utter, utter, utter crap. Utter crap. And please spare me the comments about... We're getting rid of the CD, just like Apple got rid of the floppy disk. The floppy disk went to the wayside because optical media provided us and other mediums, I don't know if anybody remembers, like zip drives and other things that were coming along, a way to write and read at a much faster rate. Why would you then need to have floppies? Right now, it is still not yet efficient enough with internet speeds and logistics as they are, especially in many of my friends in other countries. Here, where I live, sometimes there's interruptions and networks go wrong, this and that. Plus, a lot of people have data caps now. And these downloading of 4 gig files here and there, please people, spare me the comments of that's all the future. Sorry. Logistics and backbones of internet technology are simply not there. For crying out loud, they ask people to turn off Wi-Fi and data services during keynotes. We, we still haven't managed all of the kinks out of the technology. Optical drives are not yet obsolete. It's not the same analogy as we had with floppy disks. We have to have something fully replace it and be more efficient than the item that you're replacing. Anyway, Mac OS X downloading from the App Store. Four gigs. Great. So I gotta wait for this this download each time on my Macs here. I'm hoping because I haven't really used the App Store. I'm not a fan of the App Store. It's great for users that come from iOS and from what I'm hearing I guess a whole lot of People don't have computers in other countries. Uh, in, in the very large uh, sphere of people that I've run into, acquaintances, friends, and family, uh, that's not so much a, an issue. However, there are advantages to having like this central app market. But getting back to this 4 gig file, for the amount of Macs that I have in my, in my home, that's about 20 gigs worth of, of data having to come down. I would much rather have a CD that I go and install it. What about for enterprise that wants to push an image, similar to how you would push Windows out? I mean, please, this, oh, oh, this little irks me a lot. We need to have a, a, a way of pushing, push, we need to have a way of pushing the installer image, make it bootable, do all kinds of things with it other than being forced to the App Store. Definitely negative. Can't see really any positive arguments about this and really I see everything else as spin to try to 
say optical's gone and this and that. The next thing was gestures, touch, more gestures and more touch. For mobile devices, portable devices, notebooks, netbooks, laptops, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the, the iPad, tablets, iPhone, touch makes sense. Although I do like a hard keyboard and cannot stand the virtual keyboard consuming most of my screen real estate to simply use it. That's a side note. However, touch and gestures, no matter how you want to spin it, on a desktop are not going to be as fast. Period. Nothing beats a keystroke. Are you going to tell me you're going to sit here and swipe, swipe when you can go arrow, arrow, arrow? I mean, hello. If, if you want to feel, I guess, it would suit you. I want to get things done. I'm sorry, and also scrolling with the, with the, with the fingers and stuff, uh, no, I, I can't. I can't deal with it. It's way slower versus the mice that I use. And see, I think that's probably one of the biggest things. And I really don't want to hear it. Apple has, in my opinion, has just been terrible in terms of keyboards and mice of lately. Especially like this, the, 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 the magic, I call it the magic carp, carpet uh, mouse they've got there. With little touch things on top. Look, I, I use razor mice and other mice that are quick, have buttons that I can assign in Mac OS X and fly through it using one click, one action, much faster than a swipe up to get into mission control and like this to make the launch pad come up and all. Come on, please. Okay, I, I think a little bit too much touchy-feely and a little bit uh, too much hype around it, in my opinion. Then I hear about well, there are people that don't know how to use a keyboard or mouse very well, or they don't have computers, so it, it won't be, it'll be just as much a learning curve to use the mouse and keyboard. Fair enough. However, at least my position is, is that if we're going to be teaching a standard, shouldn't that standard be the most efficient standard? We all took typing just about the entire sphere of my history of work and everywhere everyone knows how to use a computer, they, they use it at work uh, I mean geez I'd be hard pressed to, to find people that don't really use a computer at work and not know how to use a keyboard and mouse and, you, and, and I know lots of people that can type words faster than they can speak so I, I'm just uh, not of the opinion I can't, I can't, I can't buy it that touches the way and gestures the way to go on the desktop. Just, no. Nope. Find it far slower and defeats the purpose. But with Mac OS X Lion, there are many great features, and I will make videos on the features that I like. And if any of you have requests for a specific feature, I'll probably add that in too. Now, I'll quickly try to go over iOS 5. I heard all over the blogosphere and news articles Oh, iOS is an Android wannabe and this and that. Okay, whatever. If the notifications look like Android, who cares? It's the same thing as like, I would tell Apple users, if someone makes something look like, looks like iOS, does it really matter? I mean, uh, there are certain things that we limit ourselves to that would be practical in trying to find notifications and without trying to stir up some damn patent conflict over it. That said, I like the e-reader thing. I like how you can say it's a reading list, which I think is a total play of Instapaper. I like how you can store short data keys in the cloud. Reminds me a lot of applications that use some of Amazon's cloud services or Rackspace, what have you, these CDN that you can store. But the Apple side, of course, is really, from what I can gather, limited to, to Apple contents. Kind of like documents. I saw pages and 
the, 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 the key data, and then of course all of the iWork suite. I'm curious to see if we could get a Word document in there because pages obviously can open Word documents and save Word documents or Word compatible documents and things like that. Then of course there's the biggest thing that I was after iOS for years and everyone following me on Twitter knows about it over the air updates. Holy crap. Finally. Finally. Finally is all I have to say. And see, I told you so. The other thing that I find interesting is all the backing up now via what is on your phone, whether it's app documents, things like this, and music, and I would say as a short note, when backups are, are happening, I know a lot of iPhone users are used to not always charging every day. You can go a long time with battery. I've owned Android phones, I've owned a Palm Pre. iPhone has very good battery life. But using Wi-Fi and backing things up will drain your battery. Just a small tip, make it a good practice to charge it at night and when it's down usually just like Android and web OS it will utilize the backup services when everything else usually is idle it has to not inter interfere with your use of the device so charge it while you're sleeping then of course then there, there's the iCloud I'm a mobile me subscriber and I'm gonna dedicate a video to that the transition from mobile me what's missing all the changes like there's nothing publishable anymore we don't an iDisk is pretty much gone uh, what happens to our published websites that we've been using within mobile me and published content like photo galleries and things like that which leads me into the photo stream which I think is extremely complex and I will explain that in a, in a video as well I'm gonna segment all of these things iOS Mac OS 10 and the iCloud and all that to explain what I'm talking about. In short, at least here and how my wife uses iPhoto a lot, she doesn't. She's not going to want to go and say, "Oh, well, I have to go to PhotoStream to re-download it." She wants a, an automatic push of the photos. In other words, the albums here and the albums here are an exact match, not a middle layer of PhotoStream saying. Or well, you can download it to make an exact match. It's nice to have the cloud storage, but a true sync is a push and making them match with the criteria, of course, set within preferences and all this other la di da da Other than that, I thought the iTunes cloud deal where they do the music match, pretty darn cool. Although, no real third-party access, of course, it's close to iTunes. be nice to have and use iCloud for other music services or, or other stores. I, however, have been an iTunes customer for years and I don't expect every other person to do the same as myself, but I have routines that convert my iTunes library into MP3s. They're moved to a net drive. It's centrally located and pushes, basically, I can access it, uh, the files uh, from all the iTunes locations that I have. I also pick it up in my Windows folders to run for my, my Zoom because I own a Zoom HD and Zoom uh, software controls uh, my Media Center music, at least for, for the music uh, in the living room. So I have like a method, but I think it's really freaking cool of Apple to do like a match. It's pretty damn cheap. They're giving you essentially a, a digital copy. Uh, of what you have ripped on your on your CDs uh, for the annual fee. Pretty damn neat. So I hope that sums it up. I try to be short because lots of more videos on WWC, WWDC 2011 coming up.